for game three of this series. And Jayla Lassiter fouls off the first pitch, off and running here at Rhodes with the Alabama native at the plate, the sophomore from Atmore. Solid on the series, two for eight, hitting 250, but has come up in the seventh inning in both games with runners on and has not been able to get the hit there. Trying to start things off here in the first. It's a nice bunt, but it hit her. Or at least I thought it did. They'll say Lassiter's safe, but now in comes the third base umpire, Philip Friels. Yeah, this ball hit Lassiter on her way out of the box. I think Friel saw it over there at third base and he's gonna call her back. But we're already seeing the adjustment that Jamie Traxel wanted from her team, which is aggression. Taylor Lassiter swung at the first pitch, tries to lay down a sneaky bunt. We're gonna see if she's called back. Well, Patrick Murphy, I think, is gonna be forced to use a challenge. Alabama is the wanting to review the play at, first, at home to see if the batter got hit by the ball. Previous play is under review. And this is where the rule change is important. If Alabama wins this challenge, they get to keep it. I feel fairly certain that Lassiter will be sent back to the box. I agree with you, Gray. And just knowing how exciting Jayla Lassiter is for this team when she gets on, I think this is a good move by Patrick Murphy at the beginning of the game. I think right there, she gets hit in the leg by the ball. She's in the box, so she'll come back, but we'll see what our crew thinks. After review, it has been determined that the runner, the batter was hit by the ball in the box. Foul ball is the call. So it is changed, and Lassiter will Step back in, and the count will move to 0-2. And like I said, that's a situation where it's really great that the rule has changed to where you still get to keep that challenge, because in the past, Alabama would have had to use that right there, and the challenge would be gone. And I actually doubt that Patrick Murphy would have used that in that situation, knowing this is the first batter of the game. You never know what's going to happen later in the game, but with the changing of the ruling, it makes sense, especially when I think it was pretty clear to a lot of people in the stadium that she was hit by the ball. So Lassiter back in, and a one-two count from Kayla Beaver. Entered the weekend seventh in the SEC in ERA. Had struggled in the Kentucky series, but like you said, Kaylee, was excellent on Friday. Two from Beaver, and time is called. And it's a pitch clock violation on Beaver. Count goes full. The pitch clock is a new addition this season. The pitchers have 20 seconds to deliver the pitch. See that pitch clock running down right here. And Beaver not able to deliver it on time. Lassiter is caught looking. Beaver comes back for the strikeout to start off the game, and I'm sure that is something that thrills her head coach, Patrick Murphy, a national champion back in 2012, 14 Women's College World Series appearances. Has talked a lot about how this team has been looking for consistency, and so far so good this weekend. And he's got to be really pleased with the offensive production. They haven't had big home runs, but yesterday against the changeup, they were able to dump some pitches and something that they've struggled with this season, but a lot of growth shown this weekend. Here you see Jaden Pone, the Longwood transfer, last year's Big South Player of the Year. Two for seven with a strikeout here in the series.
against Caleb Beaver on Friday. Ole Miss had a runner in scoring position in six of the seven innings, but could not get a run in. Trying to start things off here in game three. But Beaver's looking pretty good. Another strikeout for round number two. Nice job by Beaver here, getting the first two outs of the inning. This is a rise ball on the outside part of the plate. She throws it low in the zone, freezes Jaden Pone for the looking K. And Jamie Traxel has a question about a few of the calls from Ronald White behind the plate. I think Jamie Traxel was not happy about the way he called strike three there. It looked like, you know, a strike one or a strike two call didn't necessarily ring her up, and I think she wasn't happy about his focus in the game. First pitch, Lexi Brady lines that out to right field. And a base hit for the Rebels with two outs. This is a lot of what we've seen this entire weekend. Ole Miss has been able to get runners on and get, get hits when they have two outs in an inning but it's tough for them to string things together and score a run when you don't have Lassiter or Pone on in front of Brady. See what they can do with Furbush stepping in. Yeah, that was another thing that we talked about. That's now 10 hits on the series. For, I beg your pardon, 12 hits on the series for Ole Miss, and six of those have come with two outs. So a lot of those runners on, runner in scoring position situations, They've come with only one bite at the apple. And perhaps another bit of evidence here. Furbush flies out to right. And we're still scoreless going to the bottom of the first. Angles dump the change up and find ways to get on for her team. Just missed a home run in the first inning yesterday that would have blown that game open. She'll be batting fourth. Kristen White at the plate now against the junior, Caitlin Riley. The righty from Dandridge, Tennessee, has thrown 10 and a third in her career against Alabama, making her first appearance of the series. And one of those bulldogs in the circle that Ole Miss can rely on in the big moments. She's going to throw hard, a lot of downspin, look for a lot of ground balls, and she will keep these hitters off balance with a good off speed. But again, just a bulldog in the circle. She's going to fight for her team. They want to walk away with a win today. No SEC team wants to get swept. Two one to Kristen White is slapped foul. White in the leadoff spot for the third time this weekend. It was Jenna Johnson for most of the year, but Patrick Murphy going with the sophomore, and so far she's produced two for six with a couple runs scored on the weekend. Season average up to 348 to lead the team. I think she makes sense in that leadoff spot, too, because she doesn't strike out a lot. Well, of course, I would say that <laughs> she does there. But a nice job there by Caitlin Riley to keep the ball down on the outside part of the plate and get Kristen White swinging, who, as I mentioned, does not strike out a lot. Nice job by Riley. Hey, your point was a good one. That's the seventh time White has struck out this year. Second time this weekend. And here is another sophomore, Kenley Kahala. Trustville, Alabama native, reclassified last year. Came to play early, got off to such a good start in her freshman campaign, but struggled a bit down the stretch, especially in conference play. This weekend, two for seven with three RBIs. Those all came in game one on that bases loaded double. Cue ball over to third, and Rummel handles it for out number two. So far, so good for Caitlin Riley, as you see the head coach for the Rebels, Jamie Traxel, fourth year in Oxford, spent time at North Dakota State in Minnesota, where she went to the Women's College World Series prior to taking the job at Ole Miss. And today, an important day for the Rebels. Four games above 500 overall. They're 3-11 and in the SEC, but it's an overall record that is so important. Most SEC teams have the metrics to make the NCAA tournament. No matter what happens, we have to stay above 500. And as the 
conference slate gets later and later. Games like this are so important for Ole Miss. And it's big for your team's mindset as well. They were swept by Georgia, swept by South Carolina, and then came in here to Road Stadium, and they've lost two of the first games of the series. So I think for their mindset and the way they're feeling, coming away with a win today would be big for them. Kaylin Riley already up 0-2 on Jenna Johnson. Yeah! Owen just missed outside to the graduate from Franklin, Tennessee. 0 for 4, but has reached a bunch here in this series. 429 OBP. Has driven in seven in her career against the Rebels. Three of those came on a three-run homer in the seventh last year in Oxford off of Caitlin Riley. That's sent back up the middle, handled by Starr, and it's a one-two-three frame. The senior out of Corona, California, trying to get hot, one for seven on the series with a strikeout and a run scored. She's been stellar for Ole Miss in her career playing in over 240 career games, a staple in that lineup. So I'll move up to the two hole on Friday night, just showing how much confidence Jamie Traxel has in her senior. On the ground to Hevlin, one away. steps. Annie Orman saw her pinch hit in game one, got the start in game two, and back in the lineup here for game three. She'll take a first pitch strike from Beaver, the junior from Myrtle, Mississippi. One for three on the series with a walk, a strikeout. Part of an Ole Miss family. Dad Scott was a rebel. Nanny Orman usually comes in near the end of the game. She pinch hits for Ryan Starr a lot. And I think what Jamie Troxell is doing today is thinking a lot more offensively, knowing her team's got to put up some runs, and so decides to put Annie Orman in the lineup for her bat. Well, Orman sends that high in the sky, but Kristen White is able to track it for a quick second out. And one thing early that Kayla Beaver doing really well, getting ahead. We've seen a lot of 0-2 counts here to start off this ball game. And she's so much better when she has two strikes. She's able to use more of her stuff. She likes to go drop, likes to go rise out of the zone, and has a lot more freedom when she's working with two strikes. Well, she falls behind 1-0 on Delaney Rummel, the senior who transferred in from Illinois. Second team all Big Ten selection back in 2021. Hitless on the weekend, but has reached via the walk. And once again, the announcer's jinx on point, a 2-0 count for Beaver. Now it looks like Beaver just can't find the zone in this at bat. Unusual for her, she likes to go at batters. We mentioned Caitlin Riley was a bulldog. Kayla Beaver is also a bulldog, works quickly, likes to pound the zone, but can't find it right here. It's the call there to push it to three and one. Yeah, very confident with the rise on the inside corner. She throws it low, moves like a screwball at times, but confident in that to get a strike. She misses there, and it's a two-out walk for Rummel. Another two-out base runner for Ole Miss here in this game. And that goes right back to the point we were discussing earlier back in the first inning. 
Yeah, it's difficult for the Ole Miss Rebels to get anything going when they get runners on with two outs because you're counting on another hit to get that runner in. You're not able to manufacture, play around, maybe do a hit and run. It's kind of an excuse me swing by De Leon and Valentine could not field it cleanly. That'll work for Ole Miss, two on with two outs. De Leon with a little check swing in on her hand, swing and bunt. Bailey Dowling was behind the bag, no play on it. And Riley Valentine had to go a long way. I think that De Leon would have been safe either way. Works out for Ole Miss, and now they've got two on with two outs. Rule to hit. So here is that risk situation for the visitors with Ryan Starr at the plate. The Syracuse transfer. 0 for 4 this weekend with a couple strikeouts. And on deck is Lassiter. Here you see the sophomore from New York, New York. 183 average overall this year. Hitting 231 with runners in scoring position, but Ole Miss as a team this weekend, one for 16. We were talking to Coach Traxel before the game about what she tells her team with runners in scoring position, and she was like, just simplify it. You don't have to get a basis clearing double just to hit through the infield would work, and Brian Starr in that position right now, they sit up the middle, would score one. Two, two. That's through. Base is loaded for Ole Miss. And here comes Jayla Lassiter. Nice job by Ryan Starr, keeping her feet slow, getting her barrel there, putting it through the five, six hole, not doing too much, knowing she just needs to pass that bat to the big hitter, Jayla Lassiter, give her an opportunity to blow this thing open in the second inning. Struck out looking her first time up, first pitch hit to Hevlin. Inning over. The Rebels. Guy could see a lot of hosts from the Southeastern Conference once again once the tournament rolls around. When you're talking about the SEC, the strong teams in this conference help the whole conference because as you play each other throughout the season, you help each other's RPI get better. And we're looking at the tournament selection criteria, knowing that RPI is a big part of that and how much of a difference it is for your team to host at the end of the season, play in front of your home fans. And a win today for Ole Miss would probably actually help them more than the two losses have hurt them in the RPI because of where Alabama is in that standing. Here's Bailey Dowling back up the middle for a leadoff single and she continues her hot weekend. Dowling just staying simple right back up the middle. This is where Alabama separated themselves, getting the leadoff runner on. And a pinch runner will come in for Dowling, who's now four for seven here this weekend. That's the Samford transfer, Kinley Pate. One more note on the tournament criteria and all that fun stuff. The committee has talked about the use of other metrics a little bit more this year. I know KPI has been mentioned. I think what makes it difficult for coaches and people who try and predict these things like me, you're not sure how much a new metric will be used because we have no evidence of that from prior years. So something to watch going forward. Hevlin laid down a nice butt, but the foot was off the bag from De Leon. Or was it bobbled? Either way, Hevlin's safe. Two on, nobody out. I actually think the umpire thought De Leon did not have full control of the ball. And Jamie Traxel wants to know the same thing I was curious about, and now she'll challenge. 
Yeah, this is interesting. Mississippi is challenging the call at first base. The call at first was safe. And on this replay, I think I see the ball on the ground right there at the end. I, I think this call might stand. Well, and it got squirrely. First off, the bunt took everybody for Ole Miss by surprise. Riley had to hesitate before throwing, waiting for DeLeon to get to the bag to cover. And that kind of threw the timing all the way off. I actually think because DeLeon picks the ball up with her bare hand, it hurts her right there. If she would have picked it up with her glove, it looks like she catches it, secure the catch. After video review, the ruling on the field is upheld. So they'll keep it. Hevlin is safe after the fielding error by DeLeon. That's just her third this year. She's been so good defensively, but kind of put in a tough position there. And Alabama's in business here in the bottom of the second. With Emma Broadfoot at the plate. She'll show bunt and take a ball low and in. Senior from Danville, Alabama. Second year in the program after transferring in from North Alabama. Grew up a Crimson Tide fan. Came to live her dream wearing the crimson and white. She gets the bunt down. One play for Riley, and this time it's made. But two in scoring position with one out. Alabama doing a great job of textbook softball in this inning, a nice bunt by Hevlin and another nice bunt by Broadfoot. Table set for Kendall Clark. First pitch crushed. That's got a lot of carry off the top of the scoreboard. Hello, Kendall Clark. Three run homer, and Alabama strikes first. I cannot stress enough how much power Kendall Clark had in that swing. It's a drop ball, low and out, first pitch. She takes it to left center off the scoreboard. A pitch left a little too sweet for a hitter that's also hitting 500 this weekend. Kendall Clark is excited. What a swing. Second homer of the year. And she has given Alabama the lead here in game three. What an inning for the offense. And now Riley will look to respond against the eight hitter Lauren Johnson, the freshman out of Franklin, Tennessee. I mean, my goodness, Gray, think about how far you have to hit that ball to hit it off the top of the scoreboard here at Road Stadium. That's it, 270. And the pitch was a little sweeter than I thought in real time, but wow, a powerful swing from Kendall Clark. That's off of Rummel. Nothing doing for Star on the ricochet, and Alabama's feeling it right now. Johnson is aboard. We heard Patrick Murphy on Friday talk about wanting his team to pass the baton. It's exactly what Lauren Johnson does. Hits it hard at the third baseman. Rommel, who can't handle it. Trying to keep this offense going for Alabama. And unfortunately for Ole Miss, this is exactly the opposite of what Jamie Traxel wanted. She talked to us this morning about wanting to avoid the crooked numbers, the big innings. Well, three already in for the tie here in the second. And another butt laid down by Ballantyne. Rowe is in time to get her, but Johnson Stands on second.
Kristen White. Johnson will take off for third. Patrick Murphy saw something in the Ole Miss defense. And the freshman gets the steal. Yeah, Ryan Starr was covering too far up the middle right there. And Patrick Murphy's got one of his green light girls, Lauren Johnson, on second base. He feels like she can win that race. And she does. You think about how the momentum has shifted. Ole Miss in the top half of this frame had the bases loaded with Jayla Lassiter, the leadoff hitter at the plate. Couldn't get a run in, and now Alabama on the bottom half has put up a three spot. That's what Alabama's been good at this entire weekend. The bases clearing double from Cahalen on Friday night, put up a three spot, and then yesterday a big first inning. They've been scoring in bunches. And again, when we were talking to Coach Traxel, she said it's difficult, you know, when you get above two runs to that 3-4 area. On the ground from White, Starr will have to hurry, and she got her! We'll miss head coach Jamie Traxel. And Coach, I know we talked earlier today about you not wanting to give up the crooked number. Your pitching staff and defense just did. So what do you want to see from the offense to respond here against Beaver in the third? Yeah, we got to help our pitchers in, in defense. So we've gotten ourselves in some good situations. It's just that timely hit that, you know, we've been talking about for a little while. And it's just, that's just the difference. And, you know, maybe the, the difference in the runs is in 3-0 if we're able to get that, even just to get one. But we put ourselves in good position. We're having good quality at bats, but we definitely got to score to help our pitchers in defense. Coach, what do you want to see from Caitlin Riley and your defense to stop the bleeding and let your offense get back in this game? Yeah, I think I might, the ball might be on the plate a little bit, especially early in the count. Just got to make sure we're, you know, kind of working the edges and a little bit off, too. Um, and then just that bunt, you know, that takes a run off the board if we're able just to execute inside 60 feet. And those things you can't take for granted either, and it kind of changes maybe the momentum of that inning, too. So just got to keep it a game of execution. I think Caitlin's got to attack the zone, but, like, probably, like, just make sure we're not plating anything. I don't know where they're at. Just make sure we're working the edges, especially early in the count. See what see what they're doing and see what Thumb's giving us. Thanks for hopping on with us, Coach. Thank you, guys. Hotty toddy. That's Ole Miss head coach Jamie Traxel, fourth year in Oxford. Of course, Finley's mom as well. One of the great dogs of the SEC. Shout out to Finley, who is visiting family this weekend. Did not make the trip from Oxford. We were disappointed that we didn't get to see Finley, but I that's okay. I Cheerios ready. Next time. He could have hung out with us in the booth. Jaden Pone, first pitch, just foul. Yeah, Finley is watching and listening. Always welcome to join us anytime up here in the booth. I have lots of treats and love. I mean, Champ Staley was in the booth yesterday in Columbia, South Carolina with Monica Abbott. It's been done before. We'll add dog sitter to our resume. Always looking to add things to special skills. Ole Miss has got the right people due up here in this third inning if they want to find an answer. Pone has reached a couple times here this weekend. And so much speed. Once she gets on, always capable of creating havoc. Nice 2 1 pitch from Kayla Beaver right on that corner. She spots her pitches up so well. Good frame by Valentine behind the plate as well. Just outside, full count. See there, she throws the same pitch just a little bit more outside, trying to see if Pone will swing at it with two strikes. On the ground, Kahalen has to hurry. The throw was wayward. And there you go, Pone is aboard here in the third. Pone just gets her hands to an inside pitch. 
makes Kahalen move enough to where you're not going to be able to get her speed at first, even with a good throw. And this is a position that Ole Miss wants to be in, trying to mount a response against a three-run lead. They've worked the speedy Jaden Cone on. Now they can play a little with their offense. And with Lexi Brady at the plate, who already has a base hit today, that was a first pitch single out to right. Team leader in RBIs, team leader in home runs. Junior out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Lexi Brady, you can see she's like six inches off that front batter's box line, off the plate, giving herself some room on that inside pitch. I'd like to see her get her hands there and turn on one. She's in a great position, but been taking those pitches. Right there. That's the pitch from Beaver that she's trying to set up to hit by getting herself off the plate, but just can't get the bat off her shoulder. Now the one-two from Beaver. This is high, two and two. What goes into that? The idea, the thought process of where you position yourself in the box? Well, when you know that Kayla Beaver is throwing at 70 miles an hour and she's bringing it in on your hands, you're going to try to give yourself some room to clear your barrel, get your hands there, and you're trying to drive it over that left field wall. But the thing is, you've got to decide to swing at it. Well, perhaps a little deja vu from Friday night. Paige Smith gets hit by a pitch. We'll have another look. Yeah, this rise ball runs inside on her, gets her on the wrist. And that's a mistake from Kayla Beaver. She had one of the best hitters in this lineup with two strikes. Could tell she was guessing a little bit and gave up a hit by pitch to set up Furbush with two runners on and no outs. Beaver was doing a great job getting ahead earlier, but the second inning kind of ran into some trouble. And now two on, nobody out. Tying run at the plate for Furbush, who fouls off the first pitch. And that's exactly what you want to see. There's the inside pitch from Beaver. Furbush attacks it. She's also a little bit off the plate, giving herself some room a little early on it, making a bit of an over adjustment, but she was ready for it. And when we were talking to Jamie Traxel pregame about this matchup here today, she brought up Game three against Mississippi State, a game that Ole Miss won in extras, 10 to nine. That was a contest where Mississippi State led it six to two, going to the bottom of the third. Ole Miss put up a four spot and then all bets were off after that. It was a crazy game, but the Rebels have come back in similar situations already this year. And that matters for your confidence offensively, knowing that you have something to pull from, you have experience of doing it before, and you can do it again. Furbush a little bit indecisive on this pitch up in the zone, does not go. 2-2. Fouled away. Opportunity for Ole Miss. Rise ball gets away from Beaver. Riley Valentine can't get up and get it in time. And Ole Miss able to scoot over to second and third. 
Base hit, scores two. Payoff. Sean back. You know, Kaylee, we've watched every game of this series on the call on Friday. This feels like a moment that Ole Miss just has to take advantage of if they want to come back and win this game. They cannot miss this chance. Nobody out, two in scoring position. Good battle here. But Beaver cashes in with the strikeout for out number one. Beaver using the drop low and away. She loves to go to this location, has a lot of good down move. It gets on top of it. Furbo swings and misses. That's a big out for Kayla Beaver in this Alabama defense. And look, if you're Ole Miss offensively, you're seeing what Kayla Beaver is doing. She's going with the rise ball to that arm side of the plate, and she's going with the drop ball to the glove side of the plate to both righties and lefties. You have got to pick one, decide on that. You're going to get it in your at bat and put a good swing on it. Right now, trying to swing at both of those when it's coming in there so quickly is not working for them. Let's see if Paige Smith can adjust. She'll take that one high. The senior grounded out her first time up. Ah! Popped up. Will it stay in play? Yes, Broadfoot makes the catch for out number two. And the woes continue for the Rebels. One for four today with runners in scoring position. Now two for 20. But another chance here in this inning with Annie Orman at the plate. You have to think about, too, Ole Miss is playing in a construction zone at home right now. They're not able to have fans behind their backstop. This is a very different environment at Road Stadium. And when you get in there with runners in scoring position, they got to calm themselves down, not allow the moment to get too big. Sooners lost a Big 12 series, and what a massive chance for Texas. I mean, last night's game was unreal. We can talk about the controversial ending, but when those two get together, especially this year with how talented those squads are, it has been just excellent softball. It's so good for the game to see the growth, and also great for this conference in the SEC with two great teams in Texas and Oklahoma joining them next year. But I also think if Texas is able to come away with that win today, it says a lot to the whole country about softball this year because we saw Louisiana beat Oklahoma and that's good. But a team being able to beat them twice, knowing that the national championship is a three game series, I think that proves that there is, you know, a recipe to beat them and to come away with a series win. Kinley Halen. Rips that out to the gap, and it'll bounce off the wall. Lead off double for Alabama here in the third. And the Tide once again threatening against Caitlin Riley. Kinlika Halen loves to go to right center for her double. She's so good at turning on a pitch, hitting it hard. And now Alabama's got something cooking again here in this third inning. I think in relief, gave up three hits, just one run that was earned. Struck out four. And the first batter she sees is Jenna Johnson, who lays down a bunt. Small ball's been working today for the Tide, and Cahalen's on third after the sacrifice. I think this is a good move by Patrick Murphy to bunt Jenna Johnson. Brianna Lopez is such a different look from Caitlin Riley. Might have been difficult adjusting to that. 
and he uses the bunt to make sure that out is productive. To set up Bailey Dowling, who had two of the three Alabama hits off of Lopez last night. One for one today. great location. That's where she needs to keep that change up to have success. Low in the zone. Let her defense work. Beautiful day here at Rhodes. Sun is out. Skies are blue. The wind is blowing just a hair and blowing out. Great crowd on hand. will call time and come in to have a word. Three one and there's ball four. Just a great weekend at the plate for Bailey Dowling and runners on the corners for Alabama with one out. I think Jamie Traxel is aware of that good weekend as well. Hevelin hitting 167 on the weekend. I think she's going to elect to throw to her with a runner on third. Hevelin laid down a bun and reached on an error her first time up. Coach Traxel, and she will have a word with the Hawaii transfer Lopez trying to work out of a jam. Evelyn was trying to bunt, but sent it foul. Alabama tries the squeeze there. You can see Evelyn trying to put that down no matter what, at least fouling it off to make sure that Kahalen is not out trying to steal home. Hevlin gets a hold of one and Kahalen will come in to score. Great 0-2 hitting from Callie Hevlin and it's 4-0 Alabama. Kelly Hevelin does a good job of staying on her backside against this changeup, fights it long enough, stays in her legs to get her barrel on something with some power, put it out in the gap, and Kahalen's gonna score on that easily. Good defense by Jayla Lasseter to cut that off. Keep Bailey Dowling off third. Oh, what a snare by Rummel. Throw to first will end the inning. Spectacular. Joining us from down on the field and coach, it was Kendall Clark that got your team on the board with that massive three-run homer in the second inning. How impactful has she been as a transfer from the JUCO ranks here this year? She's been awesome, but I want to say uh, congrats to Nate Oates and the boys on one hell of a run. Uh, men's basketball was just a uh, complete pleasure to watch down the stretch, and we are all so proud of them. But that was a <laughs> mammoth shot off the scoreboard, and she told everybody in the dugout she was going to look first pitch, and, I mean, she got every bit of it. Um, you know, she comes from uh, DMAC, Des Moines Area Community College in Boone, Iowa, and was a uh, six-sport high school star athlete, uh, played everything, went to JUCO, obviously concentrated on softball, and um, she's still got a lot more to give. 
you know, she's just coming into her form here, and uh, we're really glad that she wears crimson and white. Coach, the SEC Network is debuting a documentary about your 2012 national team, national championship team next Monday, April 15th. Can you tell us a little bit about that documentary and how special that team was? Oh, uh, Tao, don't get me. I'll start crying if we talk too long. Uh, they did a great job. It's called a uh, production company called Lookalike Productions. It's twin sisters from New Jersey. Um, researched and said, there might be a story here. And they bought Cassie Riley uh, Bosch's book, finished it, and called me back and said, there's a story. We want to do it. And they came October of 22, which seems like forever ago. They spent a week with us, interviewed me for three hours one day in a photo studio, interviewed Cassie, interviewed Bro, the entire team. Went down to Naples, Florida, interviewed Jackie Traina. Uh, I think everybody will absolutely love it. It's inside um, our program. And the four years that followed that, that 2012 class that won the national championship, the first in SEC history. Fantastic. We can't wait to watch it, yeah. Coach. Thanks for hey. joining us. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. It's Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy. That SEC story coming out next Monday. There will be a watch party for Alabama fans here at Rhodes after the Tide takes on Texas A&M on Monday night softball. A special premiere event Saturday night. The alumni weekend in T-Town next weekend. What an event that'll be. How awesome it is for that program. I can't wait to see the documentary tying in all of Patrick Murphy's amazing stars of his 2012 national championship team and how they really set the foundation for what Alabama softball is today, a national powerhouse contender in the SEC every year. Well, and to his point, you know, Alabama, the first SEC national champion back in 2012 as Beaver delivers the 0-2 high to Rummel. That kind of broke the seal. There were a lot of really good SEC teams before that 2012 season. You know, obviously Monica Abbott at Tennessee had chances. Florida good for a long time. Alabama had had some strong years prior to 2012. But that national championship seemed to really get the ball rolling. As Rummel lines that out to center for White, one down. Great jump there by Kristen White. And you're right, Gray. Monica Abbott was one of the first big time recruits who decided to come to the SEC, really put Tennessee on the map, but didn't win a national championship. And then Alabama in 2012, dancing in the rain, beating the Sooners, breaking that barrier for the SEC, and then Florida winning two. And we've seen it kind of start to spread from there, the ACC with Florida State winning one. And OU has really been dominant here lately. I know we don't have to say that. Everyone knows that. When I saw a great tweet last night as Angelina DeLeon, who singled back in the second, takes the ball high. From our friend Lauren Hager, one of the greats from Florida who talked about how Unfortunate it is that national championships are oftentimes the only basis of success for some people out in the world. And I think in softball, maybe this sport more than others has proven how difficult it is to win that title. And it's a credit to OU for doing it three times in a row. But you could argue the two best pitchers in the history of the sport, Monica Abbott and Kat Osterman, never won a championship. And really only Monica Abbott was fairly close. You're exactly right, Gray. And when I used to play for Patrick Murphy, he used to tell us, hey, there's 300-ish teams in Division I softball. Only one of them is going to walk away with a national championship trophy each year. What do the other teams have to hang their hat on? And for Patrick Murphy, that was Mudita. His philosophy, his culture, great pitch there by Kayla Beaver on the inside part of the plate. Going to get lots of Mudita from her teammates there. Yeah, five strikeouts for Kayla Beaver now and mowing through this fourth inning. Back to Ryan Starr, who singled in the second. And we talk about the margins of this sport as well. 
You know, that single by Starr loaded the bases in the top of the second for Jayla Lassiter. Ole Miss had everything working for him in that situation, but couldn't score. And Alabama put up a three spot in the next half inning. Yeah, we talked about that, how different of a game it would have been if Ole Miss was able to cash in with the bases loaded. And now it feels like they're on their heels a little bit because they weren't able to come up with the timely hit, which is the name of the game. Star went after it, one and two. That's hit foul. And you mentioned Mudita earlier. That was something that we talked about a lot on Friday, something that the Alabama men's basketball team that Coach Murphy shouted out adopted on their run to the Final Four and has been a staple of this Alabama program for a long time. Also saw Alabama gymnastics showing a little Mudita in their NCAA tournament run as well. Patrick Murphy's been able to affect this whole athletic department here at the University of Alabama with his culture and his values. Having a laugh with the freshman Jocelyn Brisky in the dugout. 2-2 from Beaver. Did Star hold? She did not. Another strikeout for Kayla Beaver. Give her six. And it's still. Really good change up there from Lopez. Can see on some of her off speeds, it just falls off the table, very deceptive. It's been a really effective pitch for her this weekend. It's a slow roller from Clark, but Starr had to hurry. One down. I mentioned Caitlin Clark. You might be wondering what's happening in the national championship game. Well. Jamie Traxel said she thought Iowa would win. Picked the Hawkeyes, pointed out her Midwest roots. Talked a lot about it, actually. Had a lot of really good insight. Might have made a good basketball coach. Yeah, you can tell she's followed the team. Nice catch by Orman for out number two. Patrick Murphy had a more diplomatic answer because he's good friends with South Carolina head coach Don Staley, good friends with Caitlin Clark and a lot of people from Iowa because he's from the great state of Iowa. I always said coach went to you and I as did Patrick Murphy and he said, I just hope both teams have fun. <laughs> yeah, I think Patrick Murphy got to meet Caitlin Clark at the Honda Cup award ceremony last year. He had the Honda award for softball in Montana Fouts and Caitlin Clark, the award winner for basketball. They got to meet but him and Don Staley go way back. Yeah, we got a great story from Coach Murphy about Don Staley. Smiley Valentine steps in. <laughs> Coach Murphy was saying that a couple years ago when Alabama played South Carolina, he was told that Don Staley wanted him to sign a baseball because Don Staley has a collection of baseballs, only baseballs, signed by any coach in any sport who has won a national championship. And we were told the collection is quite extensive. Sounds like Don Staley is just a competitor who loves winners. And I have a story about her as well. In COVID, back in 2020, we would get on some team Zooms with the Alabama softball team looking to just stay together, stay connected. And Coach Murphy said we were going to have a special guest on one of our Zooms. So 
I get on and see Don Staley and absolutely lose it. I was like, I'm not expecting this tonight to talk to a champion, but she was just so infectious and ex exciting in the way that she spoke. You could tell she just loves to win, hates to lose. And she's excited about softball too. She's a South Carolina softball fan, obviously an Alabama softball fan because of her relationship with Patrick Murphy. But wishing both of those teams and the Hawkeyes and South Carolina luck today in that game. Just a great weekend of sports overall. Chopper from Valentine, a collision. And thankfully, both players seem to be okay after De Leon and Starr kind of tripped each other. Valentine's on base with two outs. Valentine just hits this ball into the ground. It's hard, bounces over Lopez's head. This would have been an amazing play by Ryan Starr, gets clipped by our second baseman, can't make a throw. I think Valentine would have been safe either way, but still would have been fun to see her finish that play. And so with two outs, Patrick Murphy will go to the bench. And send out a pinch hitter. KJ Haney, the senior from Douglasville, Georgia, got a chance in game two. Worked a 3-1 count against Lopez before flying out. Any hitting for Kristen White. Haney's one of Patrick Murphy's power hitters, and you know if she's able to get on time and get her barrel to something, it's going really far. And already seen her get in at bat this series. I think Patrick Murphy knows that he may need to use her in the postseason in that pinch hitter role, getting her some more at bats, some more experience, and just seeing some game pitching as well. Well, that's something Patrick Murphy has done for years throughout his tenure. You know, making sure that everybody gets at bats because you never really know when your number will be called, especially in the postseason. Got to be ready. And Haney, after dealing with injury last year, missing the entire season, still working back, getting closer and closer to 100%. One, two, in the dirt. Well, and when you're talking about returning from injury, I think the biggest hump is that confidence of getting back into game form. And that's almost the toughest part of returning from an injury like that. Tough play over Lopez, but it's handled by De Leon. Two in the up, out of the zone, gets them to chase, gets them to swing. and. She knows what she's good at, and it's using those two pitches. Great note by our crew, 19th batter faced. Right now is Lassiter, 15 first pitch strikes. Now if you're Ole Miss, kind of similar to that third inning when it seemed like the right people were up, you've got the right people up here in the fifth. Top of the order, set to face Beaver for the third time today. Lasseter 0 for 2, and she chases upstairs for the strikeout. Kayla Beaver, again, just so good with two strikes. She climbs the ladder with the rise ball. Jayla Lasseter can't catch up with it. She keeps the leadoff off base. Here's Pone, first pitch foul.
Pone one for two. Alabama trying to get the sweep here today. Ole Miss trying to snap an eight game conference losing streak. And what a chance this is for the Crimson Tide, especially this weekend. I was just checking scores. This is the only series now in the conference that has a sweet possibility. LSU just beat Florida, Kentucky just beat Texas A&M. So what an opportunity to gain some ground for the Crimson Tide. It is difficult to sweep any team in the SEC. It doesn't matter where they are in the standings because beating any team three times is very, very difficult, but also they're gonna do everything they can to fight, scratch, claw, and win on that third day to not get swept. And this game is far from over. Well, say Pone was still in the box when that hitter foul ball. Yeah, you can see those feet still in the box. Hits her on the knee, they'll bring her back. Patrick Murphy will ask for the umpires to discuss it just to make 100% sure. Look clear to me on that replay. I agree with you. I just think that Patrick Murphy, if he can do anything he can to keep Jaden Pone off base with her speed, he's going to try it. Now back to work. Beaver versus Pone. We'll do it again. Looks like we had a catch. Oh. Andrew Herncar. Alabama manager with the hands. I know he's a Bears fan. Perhaps could provide those hands for Caleb Williams. <laughs> Potentially. I don't know anything. Payoff from Beaver. On the ground from Pone. Tough play for Hevlin. And the throw is wayward. Pone races to second. And once again, the Rebels have a runner in scoring position. Jaden Pone got a hit earlier in this game on an inside pitch, going to the 5-6 hole. This time, she gets an inside pitch, turns on it a little bit, gives it some bounce, hits it to Hevlin. And that's a very difficult play for a second baseman to come in and make that throw. And Jaden Pone uses the error, gets herself to second base. Yeah, ruled an error, but that's a forced error by Pone with her speed and the placement. And now she's in scoring position for Lexi Brady. Another golden opportunity for Ole Miss. That was actually my least favorite play to field as a first baseman. I hated trying to receive that throw from a second baseman because it's hard to see. It's coming very quickly. That would have been difficult to execute, especially with the speed of Pone. Well, that speed is on second base for Brady. Ole Miss's team leader in RBIs. That's a fair ball. Brady's retired. The throw to third will not be in time. Good base running as Pone moves ahead 60 feet. Good base running by Jaden Pone, but this is again the reason why Ole Miss has struggled offensively this weekend because their big hitters have not had a great performance. Lexi Brady rolls over it to third base. Looked Pone. like Jaden Pone was kind of shaking her hand after the slide. Took a brief walk, but she'll stay in. Furbush takes the first pitch low. It 
And even if Ole Miss doesn't win this game, they don't come back. I think they would leave here feeling a little bit better if they were able to cash in a couple runs, get themselves on the board a little bit offensively, maybe come through here with a runner on third, having something to build off throughout this week. Well, the conference slate is daunting for the Rebels going forward. Hasn't been easy up to this point either. You, know, you started with a home series against a red-hot Mississippi State team, traveled to Baton Rouge, won that series, which was so huge, but then Georgia, South Carolina, and now here in Tuscaloosa, and that's what's to come. Bye week next week, and then at A&M and Auburn in Oxford. As Furbush gets hit by that pitch. And that doesn't even include the upcoming schedule a road trip to Arkansas to wrap up the regular season. So it's just a really tough slate all the way around for Ole Miss. An opportunity to cash in for Paige Smith. Against Ailey Johnson, who starts it off for the change up for a strike. And as an offense, when your situational hitting is struggling, it feels like a weight is on your shoulders. Like it just keeps happening. You can't get that timely hit. And for Ole Miss, if they can get that weight off their shoulders, I think their offense would roll a little bit more freely. Paige Smith is 0 for 2, hitting 200 this year, Risp. And speed on base with Pone at third and a pinch runner in for Furbush over at first. Taylor Malvin, the sophomore from Johns Creek, Georgia. Popped up. Valentine will make the catch. Ailey Johnson comes. So as Kimley Cahalan starts things off, I ask you, Kaylee Tao, who's number one when the new polls come out this week? I think it'll be Duke, and I think their sweep over Virginia Tech really solidified them as a great team in the top five. And I think they've earned that number one ranking going into next week. But you can make an argument for Tennessee who has looked really well in conference play. They got a good comeback win against Georgia today. You could also make the argument for Texas who just took down the number one team in the country. There are a lot of great teams up in that top five, but I do believe it will be Duke. <laughs> That one hops in for Cahalan. Yeah, it's really impressive, especially the way Texas won the two games by holding down the OU offense. And they got a couple timely hits, which is always important. But the Texas pitching staff in particular with Sitlali Gutierrez last night and today with the freshman Kavan and Estelle Check who got the win, that to me really stuck out when re-watching and tracking the game today. They have some really great athletes, but I think it starts at the top with that Texas team. You can tell Mike White is a competitor. He's gonna have his team ready. He does not like to lose, especially when it comes to rivalry games. And he's a pitching mind, right? He's thinking about matchups. Who can we have ready in the bullpen? And they're always so good at bringing in relievers, having good starts, and they have that Texas fight. What a world here in college softball. It's very hard to put together a top 25 ballot. Speak from experience. Payoff to Cahalan, swing and a miss. And Lopez has her number. That's the third time the Ole Miss lefty has struck out the Alabama lefty. Cahalan has really struggled with pitches running away out of Lopez's hand. This time it's the curveball. Gets her swinging on the hard pitch yesterday. That changeup was running away, got her a couple times. Cahalan just not seeing it well out of Lopez's hand. Here's Jenna Johnson. 0 for 1 today with a ground out and a sacrifice bunt.
And Gray, the story for these games has been the Alabama offense, but Brianna Lopez has been a bright spot for Ole Miss. She had a good relief appearance yesterday, only allowing one earned run. And today, she's kept the offense at bay. That's the job of the reliever. Keep the score the same. Don't let them score any more runs. Give our offense a chance to make adjustments, get ourselves back in it. And she's done that. Yeah, Jamie Traxel has got to be really pleased with what she's seen from the Hawaii transfer. Although she walks Johnson there. And, you know, you look at Lopez. This is her 17th appearance on the year, and 16 of those have come in relief. So it complicates things a little bit because you haven't really thrown her out there as a starter. But, I mean, I've seen enough from her, I feel like, this weekend to where I think if you're Ole Miss, you can probably trust Lopez to maybe start her game or two in conference play going forward. Yeah, I really like her, though, as the reliever, because I think she is a good combination with everybody on this staff, being that she's already a different different look coming from the left side. But that changeup is so deadly. I think she could pair well with any of their starting pitchers. The one batter she's really had trouble with, though, is Bailey Dowling, who steps in now. Talked about it earlier. Dowling had two of the three hits that Lopez allowed on Saturday, and today Lopez walked her. Dowling singled earlier against Caitlin Riley in the second inning. Yesterday, I was so impressed with Dowling's single out to right center. It was on one of Lopez's hard pitches. You could tell Dowling was sitting change and with two strikes just battled, got her hands there enough to dump it over the second baseman. Oh my, that is crushed but foul. You can see how calm Bailey Dowling is in the box right now and just exploding when the ball comes into her zone. She's seeing it. Just a long strike, the 2-2 from Lopez. Yeah! Long stays alive. Payoff. Dowling waits on it. De Leon with the backhand and had to throw back to first. She gets the out as Johnson moves to second. Nice job by De Leon to stay with this play. She originally wants to go to second to get Johnson, realizes she's not going to get her turns, throws against her body and gets Dowling at first. Good job finishing that play for an out. Here's Hevlin. Had an RBI single off of Lopez back in the third. Reached on an error after a sacrifice bunt in the second. So officially one for one today for the junior from Three Rivers, Michigan. And she, oh wow, lines it right to Rummel, who climbs the ladder to make a spectacular catch. What a snag by Delaney. Bam in the third, Ole Miss 
has had so many opportunities all weekend and certainly here today, but one for seven with runners in scoring position and now facing the second pitcher of the ball game, Ailey Johnson. That one low to Annie Orman, 2-0. And, oh. and for an Ole Miss team that struggled against Kayla Bieber, you got to use her exit from the game as energy for your offense, giving you an opportunity to see a different arm, maybe have some su success against Ailey Johnson. Johnson had struggled entering this contest. Conference play ERA of 14. Really, it was the control. Had walked six in SEC play. And the struggles were, I'll be honest, a little out of nowhere after she pitched so well in the non-conference, pitched well in Tallahassee against Florida State and trying to get back in rhythm midway through conference play. Well, the difference in the appearances where she struggled here lately is that her hard pitches are used to set up her off speed and they've got to be close enough to the zone to where the hitter doesn't automatically take her hard stuff and sit on her change. And in those appearances, it just wasn't. Orman is able to hit the change. Found the right spot and left. Lead off base hit for the Rebels here in the sixth. That's why Orman is in the lineup to get things started offensively. She gets one off the end of her bat. Enough into left field to get a single. I think Ole Miss will go to a pinch hitter here with a runner on first. Now check that though, keep Rummel at the plate and go to a pinch runner, Manaya Womack, the freshman. And here is Rummel, who made that great defensive play in the bottom of the fifth. And as so often is the case, is due up the next half inning. Here you see Walmack. Two and two. There's that off speed with great location. She's really good at keeping it into the lower part of the zone, has a little bit of down movement on it. This time Rummel hammers it. That's got a lot of carry, but Kristen White makes a spectacular catch. We've seen the offense from Alabama all weekend. Now Kristen White bringing the defense. And when things are working, they're working all the way around. And that's the case for Alabama right now. Kristen White is exciting on the offensive side. She is electric on defense. Gets a good jump on it, tracks it. Not afraid of the wall at all. And the nice part is that she secures the catch, doesn't let go of it on the fall. And perhaps fitting that she ran into the wall right next to that name, McClenny. It was a hard collision, but White, like you said, held on and stole away a big time swing from Rummel. And catches like that are just suffocating for a team offensively. You got a good swing on it. It's what you've been trying to do all weekend. And Kristen White takes away what would have been a double, potentially a home run. 
unfortunately for Ole Miss, that just feels like a microcosm of the series. At worst, if White doesn't make that catch, that's a double that scores a run. But instead, it's an out. And now a 1-2 to De Leon, who sends that one foul. Change up a little bit high. Another foul ball. Man, all of a sudden, some spectacular defensive plays. And Ryan Starr had that great diving catch in game one. Saw a few nice plays on the infield all weekend, but Rummel with the catch to end the fifth, and then White here in the sixth. So good. And what I loved about it was there was no fear of that outfield wall at all. She was going to run through it. But it's also knowing your home field and being able to play at Road Stadium. She can feel that warning track and feel the wall coming. Very familiar with it, getting to practice out there every day, making that one look easy, in which it is not. And one low, full count. Speaking of not easy, De Leon battling here with Ailey Johnson. This will be the 10th pitch of this at bat. And we will see 11. De Leon now three for seven on the series, including that single back in the second. And this time, she goes down swinging. Ailey Johnson gets the chase. This is the pitch that Ailey Johnson needs to go along with her changeup. It's her rise ball, has great movement on it, lots of late break. Gets De Leon swing in for out number two. And this time, Jamie Traxel will look for a pinch hitter in place of Ryan Starr. Jamie McKay, the sophomore from Laguna Beach, California. Got the start on Friday, pinch hit last night, and now doing so again here today. Did have a double in game one. <laughs> Throw back, not in time. one. Lassiter on deck. McKay trying to turn the lineup over. She'll smack that out to left. 
That's just past Johnson. Womack will come in to score, and the Rebels are on the board. Thanks to the RBI double from the pinch hitter, Jamie McKay. Jamie McKay gets the weight off Ole Miss shoulders with the runners in scoring position. I think Patrick Murphy is actually challenging a runner leaving early right now. We've seen this a lot. Alabama is challenging that the runner at first base left early. That previous play is under review. Well, here we go. We get to talk about it. This has been the buzz in college softball. This rule, we saw it utilized last night in the Oklahoma-Texas game. Texas had a two RBI double that was basically a race from the box score because a runner with the base. That just the runner is out or, you know, it's a judgment call. It's hard to call in real time and being able to go break that down. I don't know that I really, really like that one. I'm sure we'll see that talked about a lot in the off season, but the play is upheld and for Jamie McKay is a great hit and a great double. Lassiter pops that up and there's Johnson to make the catch to end the inning, but Ole Miss gets on the board. It could have been more. The rain to beat Oklahoma oh, and the great Kehlani Ricketts in that just epic champ series. First SEC team to win the title, won the SEC tournament in Tuscaloosa on the way to that national championship. Oh, Emma Broadfoot sends that one foul. And something that Coach Murphy has been so excited about for a long time, he told us earlier, the interviews began in the fall of 2022, and they included Alabama assistant Caleb Bro, who at the time was doing this job up in the booth for ESPN. Yes. Yeah, and playing at Alabama, we always heard so much about the 2012 team, not just from the stars they had on the field, but also to the role players, the Wolfpack, as they called themselves, the dugout, who made a difference. So I can't wait to see how that's put on screen on that SEC story to tell the story of that team. Oh, here's a story from Broadfoot. Stories high, that's gone. Up to the penthouse. Broadfoot, a solo shot. And Alabama answers here in the sixth. Emma Broadfoot waits on a changeup. It's low in the zone, in her power zone. Does a good job of letting it get deep and hitting it hard. See, it's on the inside corner. She turns on it, knows it's gone immediately. She hit that ball so high and so far. Alabama had had a little bit of a scoring drought the last few innings, but Emma Broadfoot gets it started again here in the bottom of the sixth. That is the first home run allowed this year by Brianna. <laughs> Sauer in game one got the start through four and two thirds, gave up five hits and four runs that were all earned. Starting off against Kendall Clark, who also has a home run today. We'll see a lot more up in the zone from Ansley Furbush, likes to go up and down with her rise and her drop. On Friday, she mixed in her off speed a lot as well, was using that effectively. I'm interested to see how they pitch her coming off of Lopez's heavy off speed as well. Snared by Rummel, who's played a really sharp game at the hot corner, one down. Yeah, she had a great double play early in the game, going three to one. And then that snag up in the air and a good catch right there going to her forehand. So here is the eight hitter, the freshman Lauren Johnson. Alabama with seven hits on the day coming from seven different people. Only one and three in the order have not had a base hit here in this game. And that's really promising when you start to see 
your offense may be clicking a little bit. Everyone in the lineup feeling it, getting some hits here and there. And again, when it's happening, it's happening. You've seen them get some, some singles that on other days maybe don't squeak through. And then also the big hit from Kendall Clark and Emma Broadfoot. Brio high and a four pitch walk for Lauren Johnson, who will scurry to first base. Here's Riley Valentine. And Lexi Brady wanted that strike call, but it's a ball to the catcher for Alabama, who's one for one with a single and a sacrifice. Transfer from Texas A&M. Check swing, fouled away. Talked about many hitters in Alabama's lineup getting hits today, Riley Valentine being one of them. This is a hitter that Alabama wants to get hot with the departure of Marley Giles to injury for the next couple weeks. Riley Valentine stepping in as the main catching option. You'd like to see her produce offensively. And that single in the fourth was her first hit of the weekend, but she has reached a few times. And she works the count full here against Furbush. Run is on. One play for De Leon, but they will say Lauren Johnson left early. And the option will go to Jamie Traxel. Johnson will be out, and Valentine will have to go back now with two gone. Yeah, no need for the umpires to go to review here to see this one. Left early for sure and saw that in real time. So dead ball back to a full count for Valentine with the bases clear and two outs. Cued to short. Star will make a great throw on the run. Side retired. And what a huge series. Both those teams trying to track down Tennessee in the SEC standings. Both of those teams have been a really nice surprise in the conference this year. Not a lot of hype around them coming into the season, but they performed so well. And I felt like that series was going to be evenly matched. We've seen that play out in the performances so far. Tomorrow night's going to be so exciting. I always love Tim Walton on mic Up just to hear his insights and his personality a little bit. Yeah, getting to know Coach Walton this year, and we had that great conversation with him before game one of the Alabama-Florida series. Really thoughtful guy who's pretty darn funny. And see if he can make some memories on Mike Up Monday as somebody in the crowd makes a memory with a great catch on that foul ball. Going home with a souvenir. One, two to Jaden Pohn. Misses low. Pohn is one for three, but has reached twice. And 
Lance right to Johnson and left for out number one. Saw Ailey Johnson shake off a couple pitches there and decide to go to the rise ball. Obviously it was the right decision. Gets Pone on a fly out. Lexi Brady takes the off speed low. Brady one for two, has been on base twice. Had that ground out though in the fifth that came with Pone on second base. And she'll have a base hit here back up the middle. And keep in mind, game one, Alabama won four nothing, but Ole Miss had the tying run at the plate in the seventh. It got squirrely at the end. Rebels trying to do the same thing here on Sunday. Furbush will take a first pitch strike. Well, and this is exactly how you've got to do it. You're not going to tie this game up with one swing at this point without bases loaded. So Lexi Brady doing a good job of finding her way on with a single pass in the back to Furbush. Furbush is 0 for 2. She was the final out recorded in the seventh on Friday. And she's caught looking today. Strikeout for Ailey Johnson for out number two. Ailey Johnson uses the curveball, her hard stuff, sets up her changeup. This time she gets Furbush guessing, looking at that outside pitch. Paige Smith tasked with trying to keep the rally going. 0 for 3 today. Has fouled out a bunch this weekend. We need to survive, yes, we'll find our sound Listen up, let me tell you about making choices in life's symphony We all have voices, decisions we make, they shape our fate But the right ones can lead to a brighter state From the crossroads of doubt to the highways of hope We navigate the maze, learning to cope with the weight of responsibility upon our shoulders Choosing wisely as the world grows cold When decisions they Right where we'll seize the day in the echoes of our choices, we'll find our sound in the melody of life where we're bound. Sometimes it's tough to know what's right in the darkness of uncertainty, we lose sight. But deep within, there's a guiding light leading us through the darkest night with every step we take and every path we choose. We're writing our story, we can't afford to lose. So trust your gut and follow your heart. For the right decisions, they'll set us apart The right decisions, they'll set us apart Right decisions, they pave the way To a future bright Where we'll seize the day In the echoes of our choices We'll find our sound In the melody of life Where we're bound Oh, yeah. 
So as we journey on through life's ups and downs, let's remember the power of the choices we found. For in the decision making, we hold the key to unlock the doors to who we're meant to be. Yeah, in the rhythm of life, let's dance with grace. With every right decision, we'll find our place in the symphony of existence where we belong. Guided by our choices, we'll sing our song.